Prejudice is a burden that confuses the past, threatens the future, and renders the present inaccessible. Just one of the many quotes from great American poet Maya Angelou. The 86-year-old author and activist died this morning in her home in North Carolina. She was also an educator and historian. She overcame unspeakable violence as a child and rose to become one of the most celebrated literary minds of our time. Have your size, Nina Blanton, is here now. And Anita, Dr. Angelo was also a familiar face to many here in Hampton Roads. Uh, she sure was. She had visited here several times to multiple different locations. This is a picture right here of Dr. Maya Angelo from her address at William and Mary's convocation ceremony in 1993. She was expected back in April for their annual I Am William and Mary Week but this time she had to cancel. She had also made trips to Hampton University in the past where a librarian talked to me today about her life, legacy, and uncanny personal touch. Today the world watched a queen right on, but for a woman whose words were more powerful than most could pen. She muttered, lifting her head and a nod toward freedom. I shall not, I shall not be moved. She moved mountains with an undeniable voice every time she spoke. Come, you may stand upon my back and face your distant destiny, but seek no haven in my shadow. Gladys Bell is just one of the many people Dr. Maya Angelou has touched over the years. She met her in the 90s. She was a very special lady. She was not only big in stature, but she was big in her spirituality. And that has provided inspiration for years. I'm a collector, I'm a librarian, and I collect things, and I, this is a old card catalog, which we no longer have anymore. It's signed beginning with the word joy, as Angelo so frequently wrote, and Gladys keeps her pride and joy near. I keep it in my office at Harvey Library Peabody. <laughs> She's in charge of the rare book collection here, including many of Dr. Maya Angelo's works. Her stuff is so unique and so profound, someone has to take over and continue the legacy. This is my favorite book, Letter to Daughters. It's a very inspirational book because she never had a daughter, but she has daughters all around her. Her unforgettable words made us all feel like the author, poet, and actress knew our story well. Leaving behind nights of terror and fear, I rise into a daybreak that's wondrously clear, I rise. Bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave, I am the dream and the hope of the slave. I rise, I rise, I rise. As she rose, we rose because of the many gifts she so generously shared with the world while she lived. And on a personal note, I myself had the opportunity to meet my childhood icon, Dr. Maya Angelou, while I was working in Richmond about eight years ago. She walked in the room and we all felt like we were a part of something truly great. I think that will be the greatest part of her legacy, lifting the spirits of a nation time and time again. This phenomenal woman will surely be missed. Anita Blanton, 10 on your side. And 10 on your side has continuing coverage of Maya Angelou on wavy.com. You'll see the article on the news page, and once you get there, you'll find a detailed biography complete with her most famous texts, including excerpts of I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings. We also have a photo slideshow, some incredible photographs here. You can leave your own tribute at the bottom of this story.